Okay, I've heard things about myself. Some of them quite flattering. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to begin by saying, first of all, to congratulate those who organized this conference because it has become a very respectable institution, uh, internationally speaking, of uh, terror, uh, terror research and look at how many wonderful, top quality people have come to attend it and we're here to welcome you and wish you a wonderful stay and a fruitful conference. And we cannot open without thanking the initiator and the person who is heading this conference, Professor Boaz Ganor. I assume that the majority of the speakers here will talk, and justly so, to, uh, will talk about uh, the threats from around Israel, the activity of organizations such as Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra, Daesh, or ISIS, that require Israel, the IDF, the security systems, to change their outlook quite deeply and profoundly, because without a doubt, the future campaign, if and when it takes place, will not be the kind of state versus state conflict, but as a battle between a democratic, organized state and terror organizations that are fighting and active under guerrilla uh, warfare. And this uh, uh, sort of equation should also take into account the refugees going to Europe, a population that may serve as a convenient arena for future terror attacks in Europe. And due to the fact that I believe most of my colleagues will undoubtedly talk about sub subjects I have just mentioned, I have decided to remark on a subject that probably is of less concern to the world, but to me, and not only to me, is dramatic, is significant, and may have the ability to undermine the Israeli interior system within, in terms of the balance between the different populations and even to harm its image in the world. And I'm talking about Jewish terrorism. There is the tendency that the media, of course, quite naturally is leading and spearheading to compare the thwarting of Palestinian terrorism to the desirable thwarting and perhaps, let's say, the problematic thwarting of terrorism within Jewish communities. And therefore, questions are raised as to why the success rates of thwarting such attacks are not similar. The ISA, Israel Security Agency, has a set of intelligence tools and thwarting tools that are quite large and wide, and they are providing outcomes that are desirable in the Palestinian Arab sector, but this is not true for terrorist attacks and organizations within the Jewish community. For the thwarting system, the Jewish terrorism phenomenon is not new. A terrorist attack on June 2nd, 1980, the exposure of the Jewish organization at the time, the Mahteret, were the first and foremost incident for which the ISA has really worked hard to battle against. And since then, to this day, it was, there was not always a very sympathetic or supportive political atmosphere. And we keep hearing many estimates and evaluations in the public and the media is that the political echelon that are that is leading uh, the security um, system is not determined enough or not uh, um, 
active enough because of political pressures. So first of all, I would like first and foremost to disagree with these evaluations because those terrorists who come from the Jewish population are causing detrimental harm to the public they are identified with, no, more or uh, at least uh, as much as so as to the state of Israel. In fact, it has taken time for this system to manage to uh, respond to these t price tag attacks, and there have been gaps created in terms of thwarting these efforts uh, when it comes to Jewish uh, terrorism as opposed to Arab terrorism. The years 2014 and 2015 show a decline in price tag incidents. These incidents are defined as terrorist attacks, even if they do not meet the regular terrorism definitions and is quite often called a hate crime. The reason for the decline in the number of such incidents is first of all the sophistication of the thwarting system, determination that is higher, increasing the evidence that will uh, allow for arrests and uh, insisting uh, with the justice system in order to uh, reach the finishing line, so to speak, of uh, such a um, pun punitive uh, action that is much harsher. And most of this exacerbation can be attributed to one central group that began in the, early, in the late 2000s, where the price tag began, that primarily, perhaps exclusively, aimed to uh, rebel against possible intentions of Israeli governments to evacu evacuate um, settlements and small towns. The price tag actions began as something structured by a, an extremist group around a small group of extremist rabbis that are not associated with the government and began with the evacuation of Amona. You can see this as an undermining organization that was looking for a regiment, a coup, a regime, and to change the order of government. These price tag incidents have become copycat actions, and some of them originate not in a hierarchical organization, but yet has similar aims and, of course, an identical name. This group has developed an agenda whereby not only should a coup take place and therefore bring redemption closer, but we should all, they should also de demolish what is now in existence in order to enable the next revolution. Therefore, this group has now has put together a stage plan, a gradual plan. For the last few years, they have been working more radically and are using means that have high risk of causing casualties and fatalities. That's what we saw at the end of 2014 when a house wa in Hebron was burnt down and thankfully there were no victims there. The Dormesine uh, uh, church in Jerusalem, the um, uh, fish and bread church as well, and the Duma village attack. And one of the, uh, th one of the challenges is to take good top quality intelligence and make it into evidence that can be admitted in court. I can tell you that it's remark we have remarkable intelligence, but it's very difficult to make it into evidence. We have a good intelligence picture of what is happening, but there is an urgent need to use these tools, some of them administrative tools, that we cannot but use in order to try and deter 
those very few potential terrorists. Therefore, the system must work within two parallel cycles, the evidence cycle that is supposed to bring about significant deterrence and the administrative cycle whereby the justice system will have to take punitive action with administrative orders breached. We must also say that since, in terms of numbers, we're not talking about huge masses, we need to use the administrative tools in order to physically remove part of some of the activists from these areas. There are situations, ladies and gentlemen, in which a state must permit itself to use administrative tools temporarily, proportionally, and under judicial supervision in order to break down a concrete threat with the aim of preventing uh, escalation that may be inevitable. When we talk about hate crimes, even if there are no casualties or fatalities, these hate crimes should be defined terrorist attacks that will cognitively convey the message that identifying with such incidents will in and of itself be an offense under the law and punitive action will be accordingly. Also, naturally, we need to undergo some legislative changes in terms of breaching such administrative orders and the use of electronic handcuffs. We must also remark that the harshness of punitive action for these incidents that are called hate crimes is not sufficient, and I'm saying this um, and is an understatement. This punitive action has to be very remarkable, even if the terrorist attack it does not bring about casualties or cause fatalities. It is very important that the is state of Israel convey a clear message that it will not uh, compromise and will continue to battle this. We have to say out loud that no connection should be made between these groups and the settlements in Judea and Samaria. That is not true. And we should not place this blemish on a whole population that I believe personally and know that most of them are against such attacks. And we are talking about a group that wants to have a messianic monarchy and the damage they're causing may be irrevocable. When we talk about gaps in Israeli society, when we see the terrible statements made in social media, we must take every action possible, even if some of the, us, and I feel the same way, are worried about uh, about uh, having a small bump uh, for in democracy. We saw in recent weeks that we can also be on can, this could also be seen as encouragement for a political assassination, and we know that words sometimes bring about actions. Thank you very much.